Well, hello today. My name is Nick Streeton and I'm from the Australian National University. Today I'd like to talk about the incision of swampy meadows, a topic that I'm quite interested in, and the uh, study that I did with the Lake Cow Foundation on a stream called Spring Creek. The history of uh, swampy meadow incision in Australia dates back to the time of settlement, at which time anthropogenic disturbances, such as catchment clearing and grazing of um, herbivores, uh, generated increased peak flows and downstream networks. What this did was increase stream power values and instigated the erosion of many areas of upper catchments. This has had serious consequences for the environmental health of these areas. Uh, incision of streams can lead to such things as uh, downstream sedimentation due to loss of sediments from upper areas. It can also uh, destroy native uh, wetland habitats and uh, lead to the draining of floodplain water tables. The Lake Cow Foundation and the Australian National University have had a collaboration since 2006 when an, a student from the ANU first went out to the Spring Creek catchment and collected baseline data. Following this, the Lake Cow Foundation installed the principles of natural sequence farming in the Spring Creek catchment. This provided the opportunity to study the effects of natural sequence farming in a semi-arid environment. In February 2009, I went to the Spring Creek catchment to begin collecting some data for my study. This involved taking cross-sectional surveys of the stream, collecting stream bank sediments as well as sediments from throughout the floodplain, and also undertaking landscape function analysis in, uh, along various transects that were established earlier by another student from ANU. This data provided me with an opportunity to look at temporal changes in stream bank profiles, in landscape functionality and in sediment diversity along the stream. These weirs that are installed in Spring Creek are also trapping silts and clays, which is indicative of low energy environments that are forming behind these structures. The relevance of this is, is that by inducing low energy environments throughout the Spring Creek, we can encourage the growth of vegetation and the aggradation of sediments, and by doing so, raise the level of Spring Creek up back towards the level of the former floodplain. This should allow for greater interaction between floodplain and stream networks because the flow of water, nutrients and soils onto the floodplain cannot be achieved unless the stream is able to break, it, break its banks during flood events. What has happened during the incision process is that the stream has become progressively more channelised and by doing so is unable to achieve a flood event without a significant bankful flow. By aggregating the stream back to the levels of the former floodplain, what we can do is reduce the, uh, the volume of flow which is required to spread water onto the floodplain areas. In September 2006, Peter Andrews from the Natural Sequence Foundation and the founder of the movement visited the Spring Creek floodplain to select sites for the installation of weirs. I went back in 2009 to investigate any rationales that may have been behind his selection of the locations where he positioned these weirs. To do so, I measured the slope upstream and downstream of the weirs that he had selected. What I found was that the slope upstream of weirs was often significantly less than downstream, indicating to me that Peter had selected natural breaks in slope where the energy in the stream was naturally reduced. By doing so, he had selected areas that had decreased stream power in comparison to other areas of the stream and therefore naturally allowed for the aggradation of sediments in those areas. I'd just like to provide some brief findings from my research at the Spring Creek catchment. Firstly, natural streams farming structures are encouraging the aggradation of Spring Creek, bringing the level back up to the former floodplain. However, it is going to be a very lengthy process. I've estimated that in the heavily incised areas of Spring Creek that this could be over 200 years behind weirs and in areas without weirs over 2,000 years based on current aggradation rates. We must remember that the repairing of the Australian landscape is going to be a very lengthy process. Geomorphic principles and processes have occurred over many thousands of years. The natural infilling and aggradation of swampy meadows occurred over those time periods. The changes that we have created to the Australian landscape 
have had serious consequences, but we cannot expect these to be quick fixes. The introduction of natural sequence farming needs to be over a lengthy period of time with considerable effort to undertake monitoring and maintenance of these projects. A key theme that has been popping up in the, both the literature and discussions with my colleagues is the need for monitoring of stream rehabilitation projects. The reason that we need monitoring of stream rehabilitation projects is to justify their existence in the first place and to encourage further installation of these structures. If we do not have proof scientifically that these structures are indeed improving the quality and the rehabilitation of these streams, then we cannot justify their further implementation. As I mentioned previously, landscape function analysis was undertaken as part of my study. I just need to provide some of the information behind my study before I introduce my results. Firstly, landscape function analysis is a technique which enables the temporal comparison of transects over time. This can allow us to determine the change in functionality due to various land uses. In 2006, ANU went to the Spring Creek catchment, established four transects along which LFA was, uh, measurements were undertaken, and then I returned in 2009 and undertook LFA measurements along the same transects. Transects 1 and 2 are in the upper catchment in a gully area. Transect 3 was also in the upper catchment, but ran from an area of uncontrolled grazing into the drainage line. In 2006, this drainage line was unfenced and, and continued to be grazed quite heavily. However, in 2009, the drainage line was fenced and managed under controlled man grazing management as part of natural sequence farming. The fourth transect was in the middle lower catchment in an area of travelling stock reserve. This area continues to be grazed quite heavily. At the time of measurement in 2009, it had recently been grazed by sheep. What I found was that the ongoing drought has had serious implications for the grasslands in the Spring Creek catchment. In the upper catchment, near the big gullies, the grasslands are struggling, I believe due to the influence of drought. In the third transect, further down the catchment, I found that there was negligible change in grazed areas. However, in the drainage line, which has now been managed under a natural sequence farming grazing regime, there has been significant improvement in the indices. In the fourth transect, in the lower catchment, I found that there had been negligible change in the drainage line functionality. This would suggest that managing these drainage lines under a management grazing regime has improved the functionality of these areas. So what my research has shown is that the aggradation of sediments will increase behind the weirs. This in turn should allow for the increased interaction of water with the floodplain, therefore effectively hydrating these floodplains, encouraging the flow of water and nutrients into these areas. We hope that productivity will return to these areas where it may have been lost in the past through incision processes. Further research has been undertaken by ANU students to look at the changes in floodplain soils and levels of productivity which may be occurring under natural sequence farming projects. Mm -hmm.